I can carry a little tune. I can run a little bit, but my pen is sickening. So th- that's my lane. If I could, if I could be writing for somebody else, I would be. I don't necessarily want to be in random. Pl- like I go places <laughs> all the time, and people are like, "Oh my god, you're from TikTok." I'm beyond that. Be freaking me out, you know, because I'm like, I don't know if you're a fan. I don't know if I the BBL song got on your nerves. You was mad about it, and you want to fight me. I don't know. So you know what I'm saying, like. Cause these BBL- <laughs> <laughs> and the thighs don't match. The thighs don't match. <laughs> the thighs don't match. <laughs> and you know, I got I got so much heat for that song, bro. But I was like, bro, I'm not lying though. Oh, man. I'm not body shaming. I'm not lying. These BBLs are genuinely killing a lot of women. And and on the back end, some of you look insane. Mm. I would never do that. I would never suggest that you do that. Mm. You you can love yourself or you can work on things, but you ain't gotta do that though, you know. Oh, so I don't know why we said. I don't know how we segued into that, but no, I mean, we here something now. about purpose and BBLs. Hey, I don't we, know. We here now. <laughs> we here. We here now. These BBLs be killing y'all. <laughs> Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like, every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, it's probably know what time it is, boy. Mr. J. Hill, J. Hill Podcast. We in the building. Another special guest. Oh, man. Miss Geraldine Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Indescribable, a.k.a. Tiny, a.k.a. She probably got some more names, but she ain't come out with it yet. She ain't, she ain't released it yet. I do have a question for you. Okay, what's up? I'm nervous. When you want to change his name, man? I ain't going to change it. Why not? That's the name. That's the name. Whoever got a problem with it, got to de- deal with that yourself. Bro. That's so, it. And this article was cool. But the backstory? What's wrong with the backstory? You spell it with a K because you're AKA. Right. The end of it is B-U-L-L because you're a tourist. Right. Bro, that remind me of like some high school MySpace type. Well, that's what it was. And you kept it. And it sticks. It works. Okay, cool, cool. Nobody has a problem. You're the only person I know that has a problem with it. I just want when it was this describe described to me, I was like, So you was mad about the name. Yes, well, know. guess what? You don't have to be indescribable. I could you be could be Jay Hill. You can't because the name's already taken. I'm saying like I could be like indescribable. Though. I mean, there are plenty of words to describe you. They won't. Mm. Mm. See what? Mm. See, I'm indescribable. No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Why you being shady, bro? Just, Who? Just Who's say being it. shady? Just say it. All right, so I don't need no explanation. Just say it. No, no, no. Um, let me. Okay. Um, it's giving. You're right. I don't know how you knew. Loquacious. That sounds gay. What? <laughs> what is? I don't like Why that. gotta be gay? Because they're loquacious. If you, I mean, I don't think it sounds like you gotta like bend your your, your wrist when you say it. No. All right, what that mean? Come on. No, let me let you look it up. up. Low quay shus. Come on now. It's L O. Because you said low quay shus, and I'm about to put L A. How do you spell it for real? Oh, I got it. Oh, I, thank God for um, like autocorrect. Google Siri all the day. Yo, people be like, if you. If autocorrect messes your stuff up, you just ain't paying attention because autocorrect helped me. There's a lot of words that I can't really spell that, like, it helps me out. Like, I don't know, like, uh, never words you be having a hard time spelling. I don't, I just let autocorrect do its thing. Right, that's what But I'm, I do a lot of dictating like, too. Like, definitely. I was about to say, like, No, definitely. I never mess that up. How you spell it? D E F I N I T E L Y. Definitely. Oh, are you smart? Well, I mean, I have a degree in English literature. You, oh, you don't count. How? Uh-huh. English literature? Who has that degree? I'm sorry, I can read. <laughs> what are we? We're attacking intelligent people? <laughs> what in the world is going on here? Right. Well, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I ain't gonna read it out. Loud. I'm gonna read it twice to myself and okay. read it out loud. 
That's right, baby. Sound it out. <laughs> I'm through. That's my last one. Oh, this you really knew this word. Yes. Now say it for everyone so they can know. It says tending to talk a great deal, basically talking to him. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing. That's not. You have a lot to say. But that's great that like I would have never even Add it to your vocabulary. I will. Now you can use it. What's the benefits of having like a great vocabulary? I... Um, be it just being able to use I guess my favorite part about it is just it's really like a flex sometimes. Mm. Because most people don't I hate to say it, but sometimes when you're just talking casually with people, like text messages, social media, stuff like that, a lot of people be struggling if the word got more than seven letters. So it's not like, it's not like, hey, I'm smarter than you type thing. It's just sometimes the word, the thing that you're trying to describe, you might be able to describe it better if you use a more sophisticated word. It might hit a little bit harder, you know? Yeah, outside even hit harder, right? Mm-hmm. I think it helps with uh, getting the point across. Mm -hmm. And when I, I was just talking to my other, well, I was just talking to my guy, thanks y'all. I was just talking to him. And I was like, man, I need better vocabulary. I literally just said this today mm -hmm. because like sometimes I'll be trying to say something, but that's why I'll say some off the wall and think that I'm trying to be shady or something. Right. Like, nah, that's just the way I know it from where I was at. And <laughs> right. I, so it's like, it seemed like, bro, your asshole was like, nah, I just don't know no other yeah. vocabulary to say. Ain't nothing wrong with not knowing something. Every, everybody's ignorant about something. No, nah, facts. The problem is when you don't want to learn that. That's the problem. That's yeah. fact. So, so English literature, mm -hmm. that's a great major. I mean, mm, I don't use the degree. That's what I'm about to say. Yeah. It's better than my major. What's your major? My major was sociology. What is that even? I'm dead serious. I don't know what sociology, study the study of, study of people, socials, of people, I guess. social let's media, see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a sociologist. Let's see, let's, let's see. I don't even know. I don't. I haven't used it exactly. See, but I think it's like the study of people or something like that. The study, the study of the development, structure, and functioning of the human society. So I guess I use it in podcasting. Uh, I mean, sure. I don't know. Uh, no, you still. That's some shit. Yeah, I feel like I they made not, that up. I would not, um, sub, uh, like tell people to take that picture. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> yeah, tell them do something else. Yeah, I mean, unless you want to work for like the census, census or something. Mm. I don't know, whatever. But I, yeah. decided, I decided to do English literature because honestly, I just did not feel like if I knew if I could. This is to answer your question: Why do you need to have a larger vocabulary? One of the reasons why I didn't know it at the time, but I just really did not want to be in college. And now doing what I do, I understand that I had no business there. I could have went straight to my career. I could have been singing, writing, uh, entertaining, doing, you know, what I've been, you know, taught to do or, or trained myself to do instead of just going somewhere. Because, you know, like our generation, our parents said, you know, go to college, get your degree, you know, like and get a scholarship because we're not going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So I did get a free bachelor's degree. But and shout out to Alcorn State University, because that, you know, it had a lot to do with who I am now. I learned a lot and was shaped a lot at that university. But um, if I could go back in time, I probably wouldn't have did it. And it's even crazier that a lot of the stuff that we like learn to do now. TikTok, mm -hmm. YouTube. YouTube, you know what I'm sure. saying? Like anything that you need to know, you can find it without having to pay thousands of dollars for a degree. Wait, let me let me push back a little bit though. Let me hear. It. You do parodies, mm -hmm. right? And I would argue that your vocabulary and your and what you learn in mm -hmm. college helps with coming up with these parodies. You it might helps. not even thinking about. Think no, about no, it helps with that. So if you didn't go to school, you might you you might not be as good as you are. I don't know. I'm kind of a dog for real. Like I always just hustle. Like I'm gonna go get it regardless. But you might be a dog at doing his parody. I don't know. I'm kind of nice. Though. I'm kind of nice without it though. I'm I'm messing with you, man. I'm just. I'm just saying, <laughs> you, like I'm just saying you just pulled up, took a seat, and said. I said name something to describe me. You said loquacious. I've yeah. never heard that in my life. <laughs> and that right there probably sound like yeah. I don't know how to put that in. I, I'm going to write a parody just for that. Please. Just and use the word oh. loquacious. No, I'm going to figure that out. I got to now. I have to. I feel challenged. Mm. I'm going to do it. You said something that was uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Not to get some serious so quick, but mm. you was like, um, you know, like in our community, our parents like, man, mm -hmm. go to college, get a degree. But the second part, is really something that hit home and get a scholarship because I'm yeah. going to pay for it. I thought I was the only one. Nah. 
Isn't that like sick? Almost. It's kind of crazy. And at 18, you got to get out of my house. Mm. So, so I wasn't told that, but I was told. I mean, it was implied. It was implied. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. going to school at 18. Yeah. You're getting out of my house. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And not in a malicious kind of way, but it's not knowing anybody they anymore. yeah. It's it's what they thought they thought was the best thing. So I need you to get an education so you can get a good job. The thing that I'm doing right now, what we're doing right now, 20 years ago, people didn't. Unless you're like Oprah, unless you like got a talk show already, like social media influencer, like those words, these are brand new. These are brand new terms for us. So my fault. I remember explaining. <laughs> funny story. I remember one time. I uh, right after I got out of college, I came back home for a little minute, and I was working on some videos or something. And I remember my dad. He was. I think he was just frustrated because he <laughs> he had a long day. He was like, "You need to find something. You need, you need to find something better to do with your time." And I just remember thinking, "That's crazy." But he didn't say it because he didn't love me or because he didn't believe in me. That's that was his level of understanding, and I don't fault him for that. He didn't. He wasn't saying it to be mean. That's just what he knew. Cause in his mind, you ain't working. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't got no job for real. So what are you doing? Cause you sitting at my house, you know, TikToking or knick knocking or whatever. So and I just remember now, like I, I quit my job in 2018, so I haven't worked like a nine to five in five years. God is good. God is amazing. God yeah. Is great. Oh. Because I, I credit him for that because I didn't know what I was doing. A lot of it was trial and error, but I just, I, I knew what, I trust myself. I trust God and I trust myself. And I know why I'm here. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And every day I get up and I do that. Somebody asked me the other day um, about this being my purpose. Do mm -hmm. you feel like, yo, take this. Do you feel like um, what you do is your purpose? Um. Yeah. I do because, uh, and it's not all that I'm destined to do, but I feel like it's my purpose because number one, uh, it's a means of expression for me. It's how I communicate a lot of times with myself. I do that through my art, but also uh, it's encouraging for other people. It's uplifting. You may have gotten a message before that said, bro, I was having a rough day. I seen this video that you posted and it got me through. You know what I'm saying? Like people say stuff like that all the time. And so I, I always remember a good friend of mine telling me years ago that people are suffering because you're not operating in your gift. And every single time I get in front of a microphone, I repeat it to people because it helped me so much. It changed my motivation and my drive. Now, not saying that I'm responsible for other people's happiness, well-being, career success or anything like that. But there's a little girl somewhere in Tacoma, Washington, watching my videos, thinking, dang, if she can do it, mm -hmm. I can do it. You know, so I think about it from that perspective. I got to keep going because you got to think, if Whitney Houston never existed, how many people will we not know? Mm. Come on, so I just get up every day and I do what I, I have all these talents and all these gifts. It's not just for me. Mm. I can't just be singing in the shower. You know what I'm saying? So no, I share what you got with other people. And they, they say what? If you can't be used, then you're useless, right? I mean, something like that. Something like that. I don't know what book, chapter, and verse, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I, um, that's dope. But anyway, because somebody asked me, I, I won't share my, my answer, but... Um, well, why not? No, I You think this is your you, purpose? I don't think this is my purpose. Really? What you think your purpose is? I think my purpose is to um, inform people about God and help them get to heaven. I think also, even outside of like spiritual or religious beliefs, mm -hmm. is to have another young man not have to go through the same trouble, struggles that I have to go through. Shouldn't this be a tool or a vehicle to push my purpose? For sure. Mm -hmm. I don't think podcasting is my purpose. I don't think God put me on this earth to podcast. So why do you think it's successful? I think it's successful because I work hard to do it. Right? And I think anything that you work hard at, you'll be successful at. Mm -hmm. um, God is good, for sure. He blesses me. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't think it's my purpose. But that ain't good challenge. Nobody else. No, no, no. I'm just asking. Yeah, I feel like I can. I was funny. Just come, well, yeah, I feel like I can um, use my purpose at any place I'm at. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have to sit down and turn the cameras on. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Outside and, and having a conversation, and you know, talk about God. You know what I'm saying? Even like, even in how this conversation, how I didn't know you want to come over here and talk about God. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. that's that's purpose. Well, shouldn't we all be talking about God? I mean. I don't think we want to go. Well, bring me back for another episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This ain't the episode for that. I'm about to say, you want to don't play with me. <laughs> At 7 it's like, don't play with me because we're getting to it. But yeah, so. Um, I actually have a pocket Bible right here. And no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard about the good news? I'm, I'm joking. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? 
I'm yeah. through. I'm sorry. Hey, you can talk about I had to get it out. Mm. Well, well, I'm a preacher's kid, so I grew up in the church. All of that stuff. I, ha- and I have my. Don't we all stray? <laughs> nah, I'm facts. We all stray. I think um I think because I was so heavy in the church, when I grew up, I just saw it as an obligation and almost a job, and it made me not want to do it. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm more so um I, I connect to God in a different way. I connect to Him, of course, through prayer and talking to Him and stuff like that. But I connect by doing what He blessed me to do. Like He's giving me all these gifts. How dare I sit on my hands and you know, like I could probably be an accountant. I'm smart enough to maybe go to law school and be an attorney, but that's just not what I'm passionate about. That's not what I'm good. This It's not the thing that comes easiest to me. And I think that's what people's purposes are. I think your purpose is what comes easy to you. Sheesh. Not necessarily you ain't got to do no work because, you know, raw clay still has to be turned into something. You know what I'm saying? You can't just have a ball of clay and be like, oh, you, you walking around telling everybody that's a vase. No, sir. It needs some heat. It needs some time. It needs some spin and it needs some work. So, just because I'm good at it and it comes easy to me doesn't mean that I don't have to put the time and effort into, you know, perfect my craft. But I think the fact that singing and writing is a natural ability for me, that's a hell of a head start. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would I be like, oh, I'm going to be a dog groomer? That don't make no sense. That could be something I do like in my free time with my own dog, but I'm not about to make a whole business when I'm super good at other stuff. You're making this interview really easy for me. Really? Yeah. You, okay. You talk about like just... um. The raw clay in the vase thing, you got mm-hmm. to put the work in, like, yeah. even though it comes easy to you. Mm-hmm. I feel like 10 years ago, you spoke about, uh, I don't know if it was dedication or, I don't have my notes on it, but it was about, um, basically, like, about keep working. Mm-hmm. Consistency. Consistency. Yeah. This is 10 years ago, mm-hmm. right? One would say, bear with me here, one would say that you're not a superstar comedian, mm-hmm. right? Um, it ain't working, why not do something else? It's just study being consistent mm-hmm. in what you're doing. And some people quit after year one, after six months. Mm-hmm. What keeps you going? I know what God told me. Mm. I'm not. What I do isn't for other people to validate me. It's cool that other people validate me, millions of followers, and I'm able to feed myself and pay my bills with this talent. But being known was never the goal. Mm. That just that was a byproduct. I just like to sing and write. If I could ghost write for people and y'all never see my face again, I 100% would do that. But I'm the conduit at this point because I don't have people to push the product. Mm. So I just happened to get a lot of followers. And when I found out, I was like, oh, shoot, I can make money from this. I was like, well, sh- we're going to run it up. So how do you define success? Then? It's, it depends on who you are and what that looks like for you. I define success as being able to wake up every day, have peace, have freedom, enjoy my life. You know, like I don't want to I'm going to put it to you like this. There were times when before I spent any money, I had to check my bank account. I don't have to do that anymore. It ain't a million dollars in there, but it's enough. You know what I'm saying? Like, I flew my parents to New York because my dad's favorite artist is Jeffrey Osborne. So he was sitting front row and he got to sing with Jeffrey Osborne. That's enough. There's not a dollar amount. It's it's fulfillment for me. Like, I enjoy doing this. And my bills are paid from it. I love my life. I love the people in it. That's success for me. I love that. My mind just be going. Yo, in this, mm, in the world that we live in today, in the industry that we work in, it's about whatever you've done for me lately, mm-hmm. right? And what you just said just, just reminded me of something. It, it sounded like gratitude, being grateful. Mm-hmm. How do we be grateful? in this career when we're, we're steady working to level up. It's like, it's, it, it seems like it's never enough. Do you feel like you have to do certain things to make more money, to get to the next level, to provide and Me stuff personally? like that? Yeah. Where I'm at right now, yeah, for sure. Okay. So change your perspective. Do you have a nine to five? Not anymore. Okay. So every day you get to do this. You don't have to do it. Right. You could go back and get a job. But every day you wake up, you get to do this. And it provides for your family. So if you just change the verbiage a little bit, this is why that English degree is important. Words have don't meaning. Talk, Come on. Man. Words have meaning. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. every day you get to do this. Mm. And ain't nobody telling you ain't got to check no boxes for nobody else. This is your production. This is what you want to do. You got you got a team of people that help you do it every day. Like, that's success to me. Mm. That's hard. 
that's fire. But what about but it's still in this in this we get to do this, right? Mm-hmm. Now I want to get to this level. Mm-hmm. Instead of being grateful for the level you are. Mm-hmm. How do you get to a can we ever get to a place like that in the space that we in? In this industry that we in? It depends on what the level is for you. Mm-hmm. I'm a singer and a songwriter. My goal might be a Grammy. Your goal might be I want to do a TED talk. Mm-hmm. It's not the same goal. It's not the same level. Different industries, but but just because you don't get to the Grammy, does that mean that you are unsuccessful in your journey? Depends on your definition of success. I don't want to seem like I'm straddling the fence and I can't decide on an answer, but it really just depends on person, place, time, mm-hmm. ambition. Because there's a lady right now who's a greeter at Walmart, and that's enough for her. So it it just depends. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll ask that because I was just curious because like some like. Somebody asked me about, um, they was giving me my flowers, like, yeah, you got everything going on, but, like, you got, like, a big star. Why not, bro? Like, I feel like it's written, and I was like, I'm not ready. But at the same time, I um, I'm, I think I'm grateful enough to understand that, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. If this podcast stopped today, I'm gonna stop putting this in here, just for the sake of the conversation. If this shit was to stop today, God was great. Mm-hmm. Right? I would, this was successful. Still, yeah. <laughs> Still. Yeah. I don't got to get another celebrity ever. A-list celeb, nobody. And mm-hmm. this shit was, it was great. Because, man, nobody in my family did this. I don't even know nobody back home that did this on this type level. Right. Independently. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of times, especially men, though, we get so caught up in, like, that hunger, that drive, that we dismiss the success that we already had. Mm-hmm. That we're not, we, 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 we overlook the great, the gratitude we should have. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering, have you ever felt like that? Like just in, just where you at? And like in your career, working and being so, having to be so consistent. Well, I think when you're a super ambitious person, like you're never going to feel truly fulfilled. You're always looking for the next endeavor, the next opportunity, the next business plan, investment, whatever. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm. I think it's, what happens if you stop growing? When trees stop growing, they die. They die, for sure. We die. So I think in my motivation and my ambition, I'm really just chasing growth. I'm not, not a dollar, not an accolade. I just want to be better today than I was yesterday. And tomorrow I want to be better than I was today. And that's always my goal. I don't I don't know everything. I don't have all the answers. And I, I'd be quick to tell people that like I'm a very I'm very realistic about my talents, the lane that I'm in, what I can offer people and what I bring to the table. Like I am not a powerhouse vocalist that will sing you under the table. I can carry a little tune, I can run a little bit, but my pen is sickening. So th- that's my lane. If I could if I could be writing for somebody else, I would be. I don't necessarily want to be in random pl- like I go places <laughs> all the time and people be like, "Oh my god, you're from TikTok." I'm beyond that shit be freaking me out, you know, because I'm like, I don't know if you are a fan. I don't know if I the BBL song got on your nerves. You was mad about it and you want to fight me. I don't know. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, Cause these BBL- <laughs> <laughs> and the thighs don't match. The thighs don't match. <laughs> the thighs don't match. <laughs> and, you know, I got I got so much heat for that song, bro. But I was like, bro, I'm not lying, though. Oh, I'm not body shaming. I'm not lying. These BBLs are genuinely killing a lot of women. And... And on the back end, some of you look insane. Mm. I would never do that. I would never suggest that you do that. Mm. You you can love yourself or you can work on things, but you ain't got to do that, though. You yeah, know, right. so I don't know why we said I don't know how we segued into that, but no, I mean, we here something now. about purpose and BBLs. Hey, I don't we, know. We here now. <laughs> we here. We here now. These BBLs be killing y'all. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. I'm not. And the thighs don't. Before we get there. <laughs> So, you speak about being a writer, mm-hmm. a singer, mm-hmm. and maybe you can educate me mm-hmm. because I automatically was like, do parodies. Mm-hmm. I know it's one and the same or something, it can be go together, but I, me not knowing, I, I associate parodies with comedy. Mm-hmm. That's what they are. Right, but you are adamant and we're like, I'm a songwriter yeah. and I sing. Yeah, because a parody is a song. Mm. It's, a, it's a song that was written, even if it's funny. You got to think, Weird Al Yankovic in the 80s 
started doing uh, doing Michael Jackson Prince covers and things like that, talking to you know talking about overeating or not wanting people in his space and stuff like that. And it was big because, to my knowledge, we'd never seen anybody do that before. And I remember watching these videos and thinking, this is so crazy. I want to do this one day. Because, you know, you know, black people, we be at the house doing some everything. You know, we make up songs, remix things all the time. And nobody ever thinks, like, there's a lane for this. People are doing this. And so when I found out, um, like, shout out to Bank Shop, because he was the first person that I saw other than myself that was doing it on a consistent basis and at the level that he was doing it at. And I was like... Let me reach out to him and see what he know. And to this day, I know I can hit him and ask him for it. But he's taught me a lot about writing parodies, not necessarily about songwriting, but he's his wordplay. He's super witty. Like he's crazy for the stuff that come out of his mouth. But that's why he has fans that's that he does. Baby, I'm sorry. He my do- he my dog I'm though. Joking. So I'm just <laughs> that's my dog too. You know he my yeah. dog though. So I'm gonna give him his flowers too. Team. Yeah, he gonna see this and he gonna be like. That nigga hater. <laughs> it's just, you know how big shot is. Yeah. But no. Um, no. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. I associate parodies with comedy. Mm-hmm. You associate yourself with songwriter, right? Mm-hmm. Singer. Do you do you um, identify as a comedian as well or no? I'm a comedic actress. Because when I think of comedian, I think of stand up. And stand up is not the same as being funny on social media for 30 to 60 seconds. And yeah. a lot of people, I said what I said, and I'm going to run it back. <laughs> being a stand-up comedian is not the same as being funny for 30 to 60 seconds on social media. Okay? There's a craft. There's an art to that. And and it has been long studied. Okay? It's, it's set up. It's callbacks. It's storytelling. You know what I'm saying? And so it's not discrediting people on social media. I'm from social media. I just know that that's a beast of a different color. Like, I've done stand-up before. I was okay at it. It was fun, but it's not my forte. There are people that do this for a living. They're in clubs every night. So, to me, I am a songwriter. I am a comedic actress. There are. It's so crazy because I think that there are parts of me that are funny. When I, was first, when I first started singing and, and trying to write on social media years ago, nobody cared about that. They were like, nah, make us laugh. So when I combined the two, I was like, okay, well, y'all finna get this music whether y'all want it or not, you know? And so the parodies blew up, TikTok went crazy, and now that's why people know me, you know? And so I'm like, all right, well, I don't want y'all to get too comfortable here. You know, I'm an, I'm a real writer, so I am dropping a project at the top of the year, and I'm really excited about it. It's just a, it's a simple little EP, but it's real music. It's real R&B, so people can know that, like, I really do this. It's not just fun and games over here, like, I really do this. I was going to ask you, could you, in a fairy tale world, right? Mm-hmm. Could you survive without the comedic side? Like, if you had to choose songwriting and singing, like musically, mm-hmm. without comedy, would you do that? I pick songwriting every day Sheesh. over anything because that that was my passion at first. Like, I'm really just a songwriter who's kind of funny. If you think about it, and you know, like my friends, family, anybody that I, you know, spent intimate time with, they know like I crack a joke in a minute, but it's because I have a lot of anxiety. So I, <laughs> I'll crack a jokes because I don't want to deal with the pressures of reality. Yeah, no, you know I what I'm saying? About that, about, like the sex uh, parody you did about like, I guess, I don't know. The sex parody? Like, I, think I think he was on somebody else's page. You know, I was like about, about somebody can like, kind of cheat on him. Because, oh, you know, everybody was coming out like I don't no, know no, no! I know what you're talking about. Um, I'm doing my research in here. It was when the uh, it was when the when the sex not that good. That's sex what it was. Parody. Yeah. Well, when you say parody, I'm thinking a musical production okay. because parody parody technically means like to make fun of. So He's same thing. Fun of the nigga that had bad. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking about cheating on his dumb ass. He wanted to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> But okay, whatever. And then, well, yeah, I say I say that the confirm that y'all understand about the anxiety. Like, uh, yeah. that was a real feeling. Just, yeah, but that really character, funny. like she laughs through those uncomfortable moments, you know. Let me ask you this, thing. and I might be so left with this. I'm okay, wrong, but I'm I don't think so. Okay, you blew up on TikTok being funny, mm-hmm. right? But you yourself just said, "Man, I'm a songwriter, I'm mm-hmm. a singer." Mm-hmm. Do you think people? don't take you as serious as a musical act because they was introduced from parodies and like comedy? Is it hard to get people to take you serious as a musical act? I don't know yet. 
because I haven't dropped my project, but I will say Jamie Foxx did it. Come on, man. He's the GOAT. Talk that shit. Yeah. We, right. Nobody took Jamie seriously. And that first album, Peep This, I don't think nobody listened to that. But when Unpredictable dropped, now here's the thing. No skips. Mm. Start to finish. He even said it. I think he said um, he met somebody and he was like acting on whatever show it was. What was the show he did when he had to get the girl character? The girl character? And um, Living Color. I, I don't know. I, I think. But I remember he was saying that. Um, if y'all know the name, y'all can say it. But I remember uh, he said he met somebody. It was a singer somebody looked up to, and he ran down on him, but in his, uh, like, in his... Dressed like a woman? Yeah. <laughs> and he was trying to see, like, man, get the... Out of right. Here. So even then, he started, like, to, like, because, again, people want to take him serious. That's when he got into throwing parties. He mm-hmm. started throwing parties because he can get artists in the room mm-hmm. trying to make finesse and stuff like that. So, like, nah, you're right. Jamie Foxx did do it. And, but, and you know, the thing about Jamie Foxx, he had his own show, right? He started doing comedy. Within Living Color, doing stand up, mm-hmm. and he would play the piano during his set, his sets, and on the show even they gave him a singing career. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So even though we're laughing at these crazy, uh, these crazy plot twists and stuff like that, he's still showing us, yo, I can sing for real. I'm a writer for real. And he did jingles 2000. You know what I'm saying? Like he had his whole career was laid out, and that's when we were like, oh, he can sing for real. So I think that when he dropped an album, we were like, okay. We rock with it because we've heard we've heard some of it before. We've typically heard some of his uh, talent before. And so what I'm hoping is that my experience has been that whatever I do, my followers support it. You know, the ones that really like me and think that they understand who I am as an individual. So, you know, I don't think that there will be any problem with me trying to get them to like this either. Well, and like you said about just changing out the way we think about it, right? Mm-hmm. Even if everybody don't support it. Mm-hmm. Comedy has gave you an audience for at least exactly even half the most like exactly that's more than what I started with exactly so I mean hey, man. yeah it opened the door mm. so where nobody was listening to me singing before now they listening yo are you from Atlanta I'm from Memphis You're from Memphis well I grew up I grew up in Mississippi but I was born raised in Memphis I asked that this is my name just no we skipping topics because you seem so like humble um. It's like a cool person. I am. I'm really dope in real life. Yeah. Genuine is the word. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean it. <laughs> Same so genuine. <laughs> I might be making enemies over there for every podcast. No. So I know where I'm going with it. Oh, Lord. I feel like my experience in Atlanta has mm-hmm. been the opposite. They say mm-hmm. this is black Hollywood, right? Mm-hmm. We know Hollywood because people are fake. Yeah. So they say this is black Hollywood. Yeah. In the industry that you're in, that we're in the entertainment industry mm-hmm. being genuine does it ever conflict with businesses does it ever like i don't know do you ever get upset does it make you feel away when you're trying to deal with people and they like they are phony they are fake well have you not experienced that no I ain't. <laughs> it's atlanta nah, that's what I'm... you know um but here's the thing i'm gonna stand 10 toes on whatever i believe you know what i'm saying so if it's an issue of integrity if it's an issue of paying somebody you told you was going to pay, showing up when you say you're going to show up, like, that's that's a little more than business. That's character. You know what I'm saying? And so when you come to Atlanta, everybody out here is somebody. Everybody got a podcast. Everybody's a model. Everybody's a singer or an actress. You know what I'm saying? So everybody has this persona uh, that's really based on how many likes they get on social media. But I learned very early, and I've been doing this a long time. I'm 34. So you got to think, like, I was alive before social media existed. And you know this. You know, like, we, we didn't even have internet. We had the Britannica Encyclopedia. Anything we wanted to learn, we had to crack a book open and find, you know what I'm saying? So social media is relatively new. I ain't use the damn encyclopedia. Well, you ain't all new, because we was in there. I mean, I used it, but I'm saying. Like, with the highlighters. Doing book reports, sick as a dog because yeah, all my was, friends is outside. But I wouldn't have said that in pl- place of social media. That's how smart you are. I would have said the fucking <laughs> like the chat room or like the remember the old, old AOL, uh, AOL, MySpace That's stuff. What I said. We, I mean, we had that too, but but, but it was new encyclopedia because because I lived that life. I was in the trenches for real. I got it out the mud. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> What? What? <laughs> <laughs> God damn. No, it's funny because my What's dude. The with the big head? What's the nigga name? Jimmy. 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 
<laughs> no, it's funny because my dude always be saying I use words that nobody else would use and they be so unnecessary. And I be laughing because I'm like, bro, it's just the word that came to my mind. Like, I didn't do it to piss nobody off. I just really thought that word. You gotta meet your people where they at, man. <laughs> Stop trying to bring us to your level. Meet us where we at. But you know what? I hear what you saying, but I'm going to one-up you, though. Oh, come on. When we come to when we come into character development and valuing valuing yourself and increasing your wealth and expanding your knowledge and all that stuff why can't nobody come up to my level you just make this really serious i'm just saying why why can't nobody come up to my level you are right you are right when you're thinking about your parodies do you think that what you mean like when you're thinking about making these songs that's gonna be catchy mm -hmm. for the people mm -hmm. do you think they need to come up. They need to come to my level to understand this. Well, you make it for them to understand, so it go viral. I don't even know if I if that registers to me. I just write. I'm so serious. He's a liar. No, I never thought that before until you just said it. What's the What's the real? I'm sure a BBL. I got a real name. Let me see, I'm assuming Brazilian Butler. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a Mexic. It's some medical term. A real medical term. Imagine somebody came on a track like. Whatever it's called. Hey, man, what the fuck is you talking about? Like, nah, you, you gotta say BBL because that's what it registered as as. I understand what you're saying. I don't know. I'm not disagreeing that that needs to happen. I'm just saying I don't think it's ever registered to me that that needed to be a thing. When I write, like, I tell people all the time, they're like, how do you come up with your content? I don't. It comes up with me. Like, when I hear certain music, the music tells me what to do. When I'm writing even serious music, like, however the song makes me feel, that's what I go with. If it's a, oh... This nigga playing with me, that's what we writing about. Mm. If it's a, oh my gosh, I love him so much, that's what we writing about. If it's this lady in traffic cut me off and she crazy and I'm finna follow her to the gas station, I ain't gonna do that in real life, but that's what the song made me feel, so that's what I'm gonna write, you know? So it's kind of like, I, I, I love that the fans enjoy it, but I'm not doing it for them. Like a lot of things that happen are just byproducts of what I'm I'm walking in my purpose. If you're inspired by that, great. If you had a great day because of something that I said or did, great. But it does not make or break the, the talents that I have, the platform that I have. This world did not give that to me. They can't take it away. So I'm doing what I do because I like to do it. Just so happen y'all like it too. In fact, so what about the times... <laughs> Uh -oh. Cause you done going, you done went through some adversity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the BBL song was one of them. Oh yeah, they ate me up. It wasn't just all pieces and cream. They ate me up. Them. Yeah, and there was another one too. Oh Lord, what other one? Wasn't it like banging? You had this thing with what? At AKAs. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They still hate me. In those times when people, I don't want to say misunderstand or mm -hmm. your message isn't received the way you would like it to be received. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that adversity? Um, specifically the AKA. I sleep well at night knowing that I have not done anything to intentionally harm people. Now, if I harm someone, my first reaction is I apologize. You know, never, never intended that. But it wasn't, you know, like I'm not doing things to hurt people. And even my whole thing, because I had this conversation with Bankshot. Me and Bankshot have been friends for a minute. Because that video Explain for is the old. That don't, that, that, that don't know what about. So there was a video probably about... Maybe 10 years ago, maybe ish. It was a while ago, um, but it was basically a parody video about all the organizations. It wasn't just the AKAs, but I think they were really pissed because I had my letters on in the video. And so that's I think that's what really bothered them. But um, it was basically, you know, calling them paper, calling the alphas lame, calling, you know, nobody really knows the sigmas. And it's crazy because this is nothing that you haven't heard at a step show or a probate or somewhere on campus, if you understand Greek life, then you understand exactly what I'm talking about. But they were so offended, I guess, because I, I really have no idea because there have been so many other male artists and influencers who have made the same jokes, if they not worse. Talk about it, man. They know. We all talk about it. I come through. But I got deep. the smoke, though. And this is why I feel like when you talk about adversity, this is when being a black woman is the toughest because there's literally nothing I can do. I'm criticized from head to toe all day long. You can sit here. You might you might get a haircut. You might not. You might have shaved. You might not. You might put on, you know, put that shit on. You might not. If I come in here with some sweatpants and a t-shirt, my hair not done and my face not made. 
people are going to ask a million and one questions about why I don't take better care of myself. Mm. Ain't nobody going to ask you that, though. You could be, you could have 30 girlfriends, not saying this is the case. You could sleep around all you want to. If I got, if I had too many, if I had dealt with too many men in the same industry, I'm a hoe. I'm ran through. You know what I'm saying? So I've always been, and that, that mentality I understood early. Early, 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 you know, like before college even. So I understand that this world, this society is not, it's not protective of people that look like me. You know what I'm saying? So I have to be twice as cautious. I have to do twice the work, go hard, go twice as hard as everybody else to get half the accolades, half the, you know, the, the anything. Like it's just extra tough for no reason. And then even if I, even if I show up and I do great, <laughs> It's always one nigga. It's always one somewhere. Wait, you could have did this. So nothing. I, and that's why I have the attitude I have about what I do today. I'm doing this for me. It works for me. If you like it, great. If not, but I'm even, so sorry for you. Even in that, that's the situation with the organization, right? Because mm -hmm. you show up and people got a problem with it mm -hmm. because you did great. Mm hmm but then, but then you in the comments of other videos that ain't got nothing to do with AKA talking about some old oh, sore word this and sore word that and putting pink and green hearts all in my comments and in my DMs. Baby, y'all was just trying to get my letters taken. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all had the international president on my phone talking about a lawsuit. So, like, people pick and choose. And this is when I really saw people be fickle for real. Mm. You know, like, you're a supporter until I say something that you don't really like. And if you think that I'm sitting up at the house... Thinking about you specifically, writing content for just you, you got a mental illness, sweetheart. You got to go to therapy. Did that? It's just. Oh, it, this, this guy, like, unintentionally good. Like, <laughs> yo, because I'm a Q, and, like, I, um, I've. It was a time where I was about to get kicked out of the frat. Mm -hmm. Did that. What you do? I used to always fight. Like every mm. every story you hear about me, if you gonna ask why, I just just assume it was because I was fighting. But see, this is the crazy part. I ain't have no physical altercations on my record. Mm. I graduated at the top of my class with a three six seven. I was in multiple honor societies, yeah. multiple organizations on campus, community service, all of that stuff. I called y'all paper to the beat of Cardi B's Bodak Yellow, and that was the last straw. Right. That's so what I'm asking. Well, you. Doubling down, like, I hear the hurt. Mm -hmm. Did that kind of make you stray away a little bit? Nah, because I... You got to think, man. Shocked. I'm going to be... I'm going to be totally transparent with people right now. And I know this is going to go over terribly. I genuinely don't care at this point. Because at a, as a 34-year-old individual who has to pay her own bills, who has to make her own way in this life, bro, I'm not paying y'all hundreds of dollars a year just to put something on a resume that nobody's seeing anyway, because I'm not applying to any jobs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have people reaching out to me saying, oh, we want to do this, this, and that. And this is not me having a negative aspect or a negative perspective uh, about the organization. It's just that after a certain age, it ain't that. I mean, you wouldn't know what that's You know what I'm saying? Like, after a certain age, it's not that. Like, it's, it's for young people to feel... Like they are, they're in a, a brotherhood or a sisterhood, and to, you know, make a difference on their on their campus, like, it's great for that. So I'm saying, when it happened, did it make you like? Did it turn you off? Though? Mm hmm. Cause I already want paying my dues. Cause you gotta think, bro. Think about this. Twenty one, twenty two. What money do I have? No, I feel you. I ain't gonna lie, but maybe that's maybe that's the difference then. Hey, y'all gonna hate me, y'all kid. What's the difference? The joke, right? Mm hmm. Cause I care. Cause I bet I went through a lot to get them. Yeah. Orders. So I go through a lot mm -hmm. to obtain to be in this fraternity, mm -hmm. call you my brother, mm -hmm. for you to want to throw me away at the first time I make a mistake. Well, that that's it. People don't care about that. People people could. But I didn't know that at that age. At that age, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand the business, the LLC behind it. I mean, the incorporation behind it, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. So that was my first introduction of, if before podcasting, now that I think about it, that was my first introduction of 
This is business. And see, that's another problem because a lot of people, not not naming any organizations, but a lot of people be doing all types of stuff to these kids. 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 They're children. Okay? Kids. And it be for kicks and giggles. Because you ain't the only person that didn't know that it was a business. You know what I'm saying? But everybody wants to be made and all of this stuff and, and, and brag about, oh, we had to do this, this, and this, and we was online for this, this, and this. Yeah, it gets you out of there the first chance they get. First chance they get. And, and you, so... You went through that blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. But it, it depends on where you went to school, how the process was, or whatever. And I just be like, bro, I... I, I wish I would have known now. You know, I, then I wish I would have known what I know now. Because mm. if I had known it, it's like when you're in high school and you get bullied. The bully don't turn out to be nobody. You always see them, you know, bagging groceries at Piggly Wiggly or something. Like, it, it's in every story, every movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, And it's not... When you get to a certain place in your life, you just understand certain things don't mean as much as they did when you were not sure of yourself. As a 34-year-old, confident black woman, I know who I am. Nobody taking that away from me. I don't care what letters you got. I don't care what opportunity you think you finna give me or or keep me from. I am who I am. And that's why I'm okay saying no to a lot of stuff because I trust myself and I trust God who's going to always provide. Mm-hmm. Bro, this shit got deep. I'm so sorry. No, I have it's that, good. I have that tendency. I'm sorry. This shit got good. Damn, like, real good. Nah, I, man, you are right. Um... And that's why I think these platforms like us, right? Mm-hmm. The platforms that we have needs to be utilized with so much care. Mm-hmm. Because we have the ability to inform the people coming up at us. Mm-hmm. And I can honestly say, we I don't think we had that coming up. We didn't. And you got to think, when I, dropped, when I dropped that video, I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? We just, ha ha, this is funny. You know what I'm saying? At that time, like, you you have a responsibility, even though I, I said this to somebody the other day, Sexy Red is not responsible for raising my daughter. But if my daughter has access to Sexy Red's music, maybe Sexy Red should, you know, like, be accountable for what she says. But at the end of the day, it's just entertainment. She's trying to get a check. And I ain't knocking nobody hustle. I'm just saying, as somebody who cares about people coming behind me, I don't want to be showing these girls, because you can check, you can scroll my page for years and years and years. Ain't nobody ever seen me naked. I ain't never been doing a bunch of cussing and a, and a bunch of um, explicit content because I don't have to. I have talent. I have talent. I can write. I can sing. I'm funny. Like, I don't need to do those things. Everybody knows that sex sells. We know that. Unfortunately, in this society, you pop a titty out, views go up. I'm not interested. I don't want to be known for that. That's not going to be my legacy. How do we separate being responsible on your platform with just entertainment? Because like what you, the example you said was Sexy Red, right? Mm-hmm. And I might be reaching, but I'm just trying to think that was accurate, right? Mm-hmm. You haven't done any, you haven't shown your body, you haven't been naked, right? Mm-hmm. You haven't done none of these things. But one could say you have been judgmental, talking about BBL song, right? Mm-hmm. That could look like. Was I was I judgmental or was I stating facts? Let's check the lyrics. It can be both. You can be judgmental and stating facts. It depends on who's offended. Because I could say Arby's is disgusting. If you like Arby's, you're being judgment. I'm being judgmental to you because you enjoy Arby's. There were so many people in the comments. You just broke and you can't afford no BBL. I don't. You could afford it, and you went to the cheapest doctor you could find. They all should be in prison. Okay, let's say for the woman. Okay, I'm trying to be that. Okay. For the woman who don't like her body, she's had a baby or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. And she she got surgery because of her insecurity or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, right? Mm-hmm. And you come and say, man, these BBL BBLD killing y'all. What responsibility do you take in her her harming herself now? Because 
she already felt bad about her body. Mm -hmm. You came back and you just said these BBLs killing y'all. It's like, man, these people are making fun of me. I, I don't know how to deal with that. Is these... that not can that not look be looked at the same as your daughter having access to sexy red and sexy red is supposed to be having some type of ownership in the people that listen to it? Okay, so we're talking about a child and an adult. One is a child, me protecting my daughter. So in that instance, I should have some say. I can't be with her all the time. Mm -hmm. But hey, don't listen to that. You know what I'm saying? And if you are listening to it, I'm counteracting that every day mm -hmm. with, baby, you don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got that from my parents. Of course, we was listening to Lil Wayne and, you know, Gucci and all of this stuff. And stuff we ain't had no business listening to. Sex songs and stuff all in 12, 12 years old. We ain't know nothing about that. But... I never once wanted to emulate those things because I had a support system that was telling me constantly, you're worth more than, you know, certain things. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to a grown adult who a, a woman, cause still a woman here have plenty of insecurities. I've been made fun of my entire life for the way that I look. You know what I did? Went in the gym and got big on them. Still kind of small. That's why people call me tiny, but I'm in the gym because I wanted to change the way my body looked. And now I feel great about myself. And I understand if you don't have the support system and you feel like you can't do it or it's too hard, you got to reach down deep in yourself and find that. It's not my responsibility to love you. It's your self-esteem. I had to find it. There were days when I cried about it. We all have those days. You're not alone. But you can't, you can't blame this song. You know what I'm saying? Like, the same way I'm not saying we blame Sexy Red. I'm just saying as an artist, I would hope that she would be a little more responsible with her lyrics, just like anybody else. And to be clear, because this type of stuff that clickbait go crazy. Well, me have been doing it for you. You're absolutely right. We tired of the gang banging and the robbing and the shooting. And I'm tired of all the music. I'm tired of the coochie music. I'm tired of the we at the club party. I'm tired of all the music. But I understand that it's entertainment. And I'm at a level of maturity where I can filter out. Yeah, this sounds good. We ride down the street to this. I'm not finna be twerking on nobody's headlights just because Glorilla told me to. Hmm. Shout out to Memphis. I like Glorilla and Sexy Red, bro. I like Glorilla. I'm not a fan of Sexy Red. I wasn't. Not like, I, I don't listen to her music. There's nothing that makes me want to listen to her music. So I don't listen to neither one of that music, I don't think, but I was I was the biggest Sexy Red hater. I was. Why? Because the shit is, don't sound like nothing. Like, it's just a bunch of nothing. I'm going to be real with you. But, had to get out my old bag and give her props when it was due. Because at the stage of her, I just said this on another podcast, at mm -hmm. the stage of her career, she got more slaps than Cardi once did at the stage, at the same stage of her career. And I'm like, I might not like it, but I got to recognize it. It's like, yo. She got some heat. Yeah, but the standards are different in 2023, yeah, too. Thanks. So. But you can't lie. I don't know when the last time you in a club. Auntie don't club. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. The, I don't the, the, the most turn I'm going to be is playing a little something in the car on the way home. What's that song? This, if you're in a club and they play some, matter of fact, it be any Sexy Red song. Okay. They throw on Sexy Red, that motherfucker going up. So I got to give her respect. Well, that's, you know, gotta you got to think. Like, when we was kids, our parents didn't really understand our music either. Facts. So. I used to rap 50 Cent. Yeah, rap. ain't nobody trying to hear many men wish death pump me. My dad would be like, I remember, <laughs> what song was it? It was, uh, it was Ludacris. Um, Roll Out. Mm. I was in, the, I don't know why I was singing this song, but, you know, on Saturdays, they would have the video countdown and I would watch it just for the Ludacris video. And so one time I was, I was, what in the world is in that bag? What you got in that bag? A couple of cans. What you need a good job of just, I, you know, I'm just rapping it. And my daddy comes around the corner. He like, what are you talking about? You know, like he's instantly pissed because he don't even know what I'm saying. But my, my mouth is moving too fast. You know what I'm saying? Like it got to be bad. You know what I'm saying? So I just remember like we getting up there, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't want to relate to a 20 year old. I'm 34. But you also, guys, I'm just trying to just be, oh, I have a little more grace for the kids. No, I have plenty of grace for them. They can do whatever they want. I'm not out here holding sexy red boycotts. Okay. You know, she can have her career. I'm just saying, I'm, it's yeah, the same way people watch my content and decide that I'm not funny or I'm not talented. 
That's fair. Purpose. Everything ain't for everybody. Yeah. The song I was thinking about was looking for the hoes. That shit come on in the club. Looking oh, for the hoes. Even a 35 year old. <laughs> I'm looking for the hoes. Shit. Damn. I've never heard this song. This is hey, new to me. Hey, you need to go to the clubs. Have a little fun. I don't want to go to the club. Not even a club. Go to a lounge. I don't want to. That motherfucker come on. He's in a lounge. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Bro. Bro. I don't, that I shit go crazy. I'm like looking around like, damn. I ain't never in my life looked for no hoe. I, hey. I, I'd rather not. Hey, I'm about to be married. I, don't want I ain't meet. looking for it, but I'm just saying. Like, I don't want to meet any hoes. You can my recognize age. the energy. That's all I'm saying. The energy can be recognized. The hey, energy. shout out to Sexy Red. Shout out to her. So, okay, since we're in this music topic, you about to drop up a project. I am, music. yeah. How many songs? Five. EP. What type of R&B music you make? Straight R and B, like old school. Like, give me an artist that I could think. Of. Somebody told me like Mary J. Blige, Keisha Cole style type. It's I'm melodic. In the range that like you I'm gotta just be telling careful. you. Come on, I'm I'm grown. Don't come I'm not gonna be out here. Oh my god, I love him. He was on my Snapchat, my Insta story. I'm not gonna be talking what about you that. Just Mary J. Blige, I'm grown, right? Keisha Cole. Yeah, the grit, the pain, the realness. What real? What you got to talk about? At my age, plenty. Give me some mark. What? Give me a song to talk up. Talk. Talk to me about a song that you made that was like Mary J. Blige esque on your EP that's about to go. I would say there's a song. It's. I'm not gonna say that it would sound like Mary J. Blige, but I'm gonna say that it might. The writing style might be close to it, and I would say that it's never had love. That's one of the songs. And it's basically talking about how I really want to love you, but you're making it hard. Mm. I, I'm doing everything I can, but you're really making it hard. So okay. that's all, all right. I'm going to give you because I... I ain't going to lie to you. you no, know, my manager's here and I don't want to mess up the money. Hey, <laughs> that, that, that's... Uh, I ain't going to lie. That's good. That's like a conversation I'll be having with my fiance on the podcast. I, but that's, that's the point yeah. of the music. I yeah. want people to hear it and be like, that's Rico. Mm. That's Derek. You know, that's Tamika, whoever it is. Son. That's Jay. I'm making it hard, nigga. You know it's hard to love you. Yeah, I mean, but it's hard to love all of us because right. we all have traumas. We all come with our flaws. And the goal is not to make you bend to my will. The goal is, hey, let's get an understanding. How can we be the best versions of ourselves for each other without compromising who we are? Bro, wrap this interview up, bro. What I do? You snap and you good, you fight, you oh, going right. crazy. Hey, wrap this, man, how the fuck? Hey, wrap this shit up, man. <laughs> Like, this is like she ain't going crazy. I'm this, sorry. This, oh, this was like this was unexpectedly like. Oh, what you thought we was gonna talk about TikTok challenges and stuff? You, you, you know, yeah, it's none about TikTok. <laughs> you like, just didn't know. No, no, I'm right. just saying this shit was good. That's like, all right. I appreciate good. that. I appreciate you pulling it up though, for real. Of course. You got a name for the project? I, I don't really be talking about music on a podcast like that. I talk about like. White I music. have a I, I have a name, but I'm not sure. No. I think it's, it's a, yeah, I think it's name. funny. It's it's a working title, what but you, what you, what you know, I have the I have the skits where I I either get fired or I get beat up or something like that, and the line is, "Y'all finna kick me out the show, ain't it?" Mm. And so I might be going with R and B is back, ain't it? Mm. Not that there aren't R and B artists that are doing well in the genre. I'm just saying it's a nice spin on. Are we supposed to be wrapping up? I got more. I'm sorry. About them. Shit. Well, look, what time is nah, it? That's fine. It's fine. Okay. We don't got time. This podcast this is different over here. I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, this ain't ready. It's different over here. We can do this for three hours. Yo. Okay. Ask me what's just one more question. Then. Okay. Go because I feel like you just your mind is percolating. I feel like it's hard because I was gonna ask you what R&B did right, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's hard to even be alive where we are. Mm -hmm. It is. I don't think it's dead. I think the the culture is shifting and we don't appreciate the music as much. Because you got to think, these kids today are popping pills in high school. They don't really know much about love because everybody's so afraid to get hurt. Nobody's being vulnerable. You know, nobody paying a, paying a rent or a mortgage together. These folks stay with their mama. You know what I'm saying? So. And these, when we say these folks, these are the people that's, for the most part, consuming, consuming the, the music. music. Yeah. Come on, same and then you got to think, too, we have machines like Instagram and TikTok that push these songs that are dope for 20 seconds. You don't know what the rest of these people talking about. I don't. I just know I'm looking for the hoes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, everybody's looking for hoes. Nobody really knows what the hoe is bringing to the table, but we want the hoes. I just know. 
The pussy big, that booty old crowd. Exactly. <laughs> Two things I never needed to hear. Never needed to hear. That's all I but know. now I know. And it's crazy because shot straight up the charts. Mm-hmm. Now you're right. I don't know. I think, but also, I'm going to mm-hmm. compare it to this, though. Mm-hmm. The girl, the white girl, Bobby, all talk, right? Mm-hmm. I just feel like I'm going to make it make sense. Mm-hmm. She did an interview with Drake, right? And a lot, right. Of, a lot of journalists was upset with her, not her, at Drake, because they like, yo, come to, we want to talk about hip-hop, you can come to us. Mm-hmm. And I compare it to the music and R&B specifically because I just feel like we're in a state where R&B make you think. Yeah. It make you cry. And I feel like the world, we're done with that pain. Like, mm-hmm. when it's like, bro, that's why Drake can go to Bobby because he know. I, you're not about to ask me no real questions that make me gotta relive this. Like even man, you mm-hmm. had some great conversations, but you you had to get vulnerable a little bit. Mm-hmm. Not everybody want to live through that again. It's like, bro, like I want to have fun. I don't gotta go through that, bro. Like we don't gotta do. Well, that. who said who said it's not fun? Mm. I'm sure when people see this interview, they're gonna they're gonna come away from it feeling like they know just a little bit more about me. Mm. And you brought that out of me, mm-hmm. so that's a plus for both of us. Mm-hmm. But I don't mind. Here's the thing, man. I'm human. I'm human. I'm not going to come on here and pretend like I'm nobody that I'm not. I can't do it because I learned early in life I can't sustain it. I'm not going to, I'm not Cardi B. I'm not Beyonce. I'm just me. I'm not the next nobody. I'm the first and only me. And that's good enough for me. Bro, get the fuck on, man. Go home. Like, <laughs> like, yo, go home, bro. Like, you, like, nah, like, in a good way. Like, respectfully, like, nah, I think. I, I I genuinely thank you for uh, being so open and vulnerable. Man, if I could take this interview and have it a blueprint of like, even like the guests I get. Because <laughs> like, they, they, they feel like their vulnerability and, and very much so in media, it is used against them, but it's power in that. Mm-hmm. People need to see that. Like, it's so much yeah. power in that and, and showing that you are human, even through your mistakes, because that's yeah. what makes us human. Yeah. But um, now nah, this is a breath of fresh air. Like, I thank you. Um, for the people that don't know, let them know how to follow you on Instagram and how to support the project about to come out and all that. Well, thank you so much for having me. Also, um, you can find me everywhere at Indescribable. I N D E S K R I B E A B U L L. I know it's a mouthful. Don't worry about it. The album is dropping, and you, you're going to enjoy it. So you can find me everywhere on all platforms at Indescribable, and check out some of the merch. Okay, to be apparel dot com. So it's like a pro black is fashion plus activism. Phrases like, you know, black men are necessary. It's okay to be black. And, you know, we tired black women because we are. Um, but, yeah, just it started as like a little fun thing to do, make some money on the side. And then it turned into like this movement for my fans. Um, so I just I have enjoyed doing what I do because it, it's like it's me. Like I enjoy being me and I enjoy starting conversations. I'm a storyteller. That's what I do. So I enjoy being able to tell people stories. Yeah, that's great. You might have to come back on and tell some more stories. Bro. Man, listen, come on. What you, what you doing tomorrow? I'm just playing. Don't play with me. <laughs> no, Don't threaten me with a good time. Yo, Tiny, a.k.a. Indescribable, a.k.a. Um, I'm not even going to say the whole name because I'm going to mess it up because we've been talking for like an hour. Wait, Geraldine He Blake? forgot. Geraldine Lake. <laughs> no, I said Blake. Lake, That's not Lake, it. Lake, 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 Lake. I got the first See? name right, though. You being too how loquacious. I the, how I get the You right? being way too loquacious right now. How did I get the first Geraldine Lake? Yep. AKA Remember the name. Yeah, AKA Indescribable, AKA Tiny. It was great having me. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Yes, Sirski. That was good, man. <laughs>